Well, hello there, my little yarn goblins and fiber trolls. Welcome back to the Pearlcast. My name is Christopher. I am Flannel and Pearls. And welcome to a very festive, very special Halloween edition of Flannel and Pod. I did not think that I was going to have the energy. I really didn't think that I had the time to get out a Halloween special. However, I was sitting here this weekend watching everybody else release their videos about the... um event that we shall not name. And you know what? I wasn't there. I wasn't a part of it. I am not going to pile on. I have absolutely no interest in stirring the pot, but it did get me thinking. It was like, oh, you know what this community needs more of, especially this time of year? Craft-based horror stories. I wish that I had one. And then I remembered, I do. And this story has everything. It has indie dyers going crazy in the comments. It's got custom products being purchased at a premium rate. It has a final boy who is doing his absolute best to find his way out of a situation for which there is zero exit. And I cannot wait to share this with you. But first, you know, I'm feeling like we might need a little bit of a change of setting. We need some scenery to really set the environment and the energy for the story. So before we get started, Okay. All right. Hi. Oh, I like you. Look at you. That's actually how I dance. That's very similar. We... All right. Now that we have a proper environment, what we have to do is we have to set the scene. So it's a uh, spring of last year. Okay. So like March-ish, April of 2022. Nobody knows who I am. Virtually none of you were following me on Instagram. I certainly didn't have a YouTube account. Absolutely no one gave a shit about who Flannel and Pearls was. And frankly, I would argue maybe they still shouldn't. Big no -no. I was about to go into surgery. I was gonna have multiple weeks of recovery, lots of downtime. And I thought to myself, what a wonderful opportunity to do a big project. I had just finished my Dusselin sweater. I had just finished my Into the Wild sweater. And I thought, yes, yes, let's do another sweater. And so what I settled on was I was going to make the single malt sweater, which I feel like everybody knows this sweater, but in the event that you don't, this is what it looks like. I love this sweater. I will make this sweater someday. It's a great, it's a great, great, great garment. But I didn't have the yarn for it. That's really what it came down to is I was like, all right, so before the surgery happens, let's go ahead and let's get all the materials that we need. Let's gather everything up. Let's make sure that we're ready for this project to get off the ground. So I was doing some shopping and I decided I had it in my mind. I've only ever seen this done with speckles and with tonals. I've never seen anyone do it with a variegation. And I think that would be really interesting. There was a particular dyer who is on Instagram whose name is... You know what? No, no, redacted. No, nope, I'm, I'm cutting that out. I'm not in the business of starting drama. We're gonna go ahead. We're just going to um, refer to them as the dyer, the dead. Let's refer to them as the dead. Let's do that. So I find this, this particular dyer, the dead on Instagram. I had been admiring their work for months. I thought that it was absolutely, I still think that it's absolutely beautiful. My experience with them doesn't really change the way that I feel about their work, just about their business practices. And so I was on their website. I found a particular colorway that I thought was truly beautiful. It was this blend of pops of pinks with a deep, rich, oxblood red. It had tiny little flecks of green in it and some orange. It was just so interesting. Like some of those things feel like they go together and some of them don't. But in this, in this colorway, in this instance, it all worked. And I thought, what an interesting shade to make that single malt out of. I reached out to them and I said, listen, I'd love to make a sweater out of this colorway. However, I noticed that you've only got four hanks of it on your website. I'm going to need nine because I'm a bit of a broad fella, so I'm gonna need nine of those hanks. What can we do? Now, in, my, in, in both my and their defense, I had not read the policy for the website. I had not done my due diligence of taking a look at their policies, and if I had, I would have noticed that it says 
no custom orders. I was very new to the world of knitting in general, let alone buying from indie dyers. So it had never even crossed my mind to take a look at their, their policy to see if that was even something they did. I just, I hit their website, I found something that I loved, and I reached out to them via email. The response that I got was, you know what, under normal circumstances, I don't do sweater quantities, but I think that this would be really cool. Let's go ahead and let's do it. Let's make a, a custom order. And I was like, amazing. I was so geeked. I was so excited. It was the first time that I had ever reached out to an indie dyer with a request like that. And I was so incredibly nervous because I don't know about y'all, but I have spent most of my professional life working in service-based environments, customer service, account management, whatever it is, I've almost always been client-facing, customer-facing. And I personally believe that absolutely everyone on this planet should have to do at least three years of service-based work. Like, I think it should be compulsory. That's just my opinion. However, because of that, I try really hard for every interaction where I am a customer, I try so hard for that to be the best experience that that person has that day. And so I was nervous. I was so worried about reaching out to them with this, this unique request, but they were so nice. They were so incredibly chill about it. They were like, yeah, let's make it happen. In fact, I don't know if you noticed, but there are two different versions of this colorway. There's one and there's two. You reached out to me about two, is there anything about one that interests you? Which, unbeknown to them, that was really where they, they should never have brought that up for me because I am, I am an absolutely indecisive person. And you give me two options that I suddenly, and they're very similar. They're virtually the same with some incredibly tiny details in the uh, differentiating them. They're the same picture. It's not, it's not gonna work out for either of us. And so, we went back and forth over a few emails, and ultimately what it came down to is version one had more of that oxblood color, that dark, rich, heavy red to it, than two did, which I really loved. Like, that was my favorite part of the colorway. And so ultimately, the request became, I really like two, but if what you're saying is this is going to be custom anyway, and you have to make all of these uniquely, if you can, I'd love for you to pop some more of that ox blood in there because it's really cool. They said, absolutely no problem. We'll go ahead and we'll get started on that. I told them I have to leave for surgery in July. So just if you can get it to me before then, that would be great. Because at the time I was living in Chicago and if it had not received, if I, if I had not received it before I left, it was not going to be there when I got back. All right, months go by. I knew that it was gonna take several weeks for them to get this order together. They told me that. They said it'll probably take four to six weeks. No big deal. I'm in no rush. I'm not gonna start this project before I leave. Time continues to roll, however. We start hitting the two month period and I'm still not, it's not like I'm rushing to get the project done. I'm just worried about it arriving while I'm gone. So I reach out to them about hmm, two weeks before I'm set to leave. And I just say, hey, is it done? Is it gonna be done? Because if it's not, let's just hold off. Let's hold off on it. I will be back on this date. You can send it to me anytime after that. Totally chill. What I think happened is that they forgot about the order. That's what I think happened. Or it just got lost in the shuffle, which like, that's fine. I've done that before, not with orders, but I've forgotten things. Things have gotten lost. We're all just people, just trying to do our absolute best. <laughs> And so they were like, you know what? I'm really sorry. Let me get that for you. We're going to get it out this week. And they did. I received it. It wasn't that big of a deal. They gave me a, a nice little coupon code for like 15% off or something like that for my next order, which was they did not need to do. I appreciated the fact they did, but they didn't need to do that. I open up the box and the yarn is a disaster. And I'm, listen, I am not in the mood. I am not the type of person to just talk somebody else's work. I have never been a dyer. I am sure that it is incredibly difficult to create nine consistent hanks of wool. I don't wanna do that. I totally get it. But here's the situation. It was not like I could have swapped between balls. No, I'm talking about entire sections that were just fully white undyed yarn. Just whole chunks of 
stark white undyed yarn, locks of it. There were these splotches of muddy brown, which I'm guessing had to have been where the oxblood and the green met. Weird, bright, royal blue blobs that existed. It was just, it was incredibly strange and very much unlike one or two. And worse yet, it was certainly not indicative of the level of skill that this dyer possesses, as evidenced by the rest of their work. I, un I uh, untwisted two of the hanks just to take a look, just to see, is it just one that's a problem or is it all of them? It was all of them. I agonized. I really did for like three days. And the last thing that I wanted to do was reach out to someone and say, hey, this ain't it. So what I do is I send them an email saying, listen, this is the situation. I just got the yarn. I've unwrapped it. I've taken a look at it and I can't use this. And you know what? To their credit, incredibly apologetic, super nice. Said, you know what? I don't normally do sweater quantities and this is why. Like I, their exact words were, I I decided to push myself in terms of my skill set, try something new and it didn't work out. Please send it back to me. I'll refund you. It's, it's really not that big a deal. I'm really sorry. I felt the exact same way. It wasn't that big of a deal. Let me send it back. No big deal. Shipped it right back out the next day. They had it the next week. Everything was chill. They gave me a refund. Everything was fine. Until. Cut to a month later and they've got a sale going on. It's free shipping for orders over $100. And I remember in the back of my head, oh yeah, I've got that refund. I could absolutely do with some beautiful yarn. Let's make it happen. So I hop on the site, I fill up a cart, which was absolutely larger than the amount that I was originally refunded. It was a hefty order. But it was at that moment that I realized that instead of refunding my card or giving me a gift card for the original order amount, what she had done was refund the amount of it into a coupon code. And this is where the problems arise, is that I wasn't able to use both my refund and the coupon code for the deal. Now, it was late at night. I wasn't going to reach out to them. There was a particular colorway that was in my cart that only had one hank left. And I was like, you know what? I'm not going to run the risk of missing out on this. I'll just go ahead. I'll place the order. I'll reach out to her and say, hey, for some reason, I wasn't able to use the coupon code for your, your sale. Um, what can we do? Next day, I just sent her an email that was like, hey, so glad to be back in your shop. I tried to use your sale code, but unfortunately, I wasn't able to do that with my refund. Is there anything that you can do for me. Her response was disproportionate to the request. I think that's the nicest way I can put it. Her response to me was as if this was the 96th time that I had reached out to her and that each time I reached out, I was asking for more and more things, being more and more demanding, and that perhaps she had already asked me to stop multiple times and yet I still kept showing up on her doorstep. What do you want? Hey, I was just wondering if you would honor your coupon code. I don't understand why she's so upset. And furthermore, I'm blaming myself thinking, did I do something to upset her? Did I make her mad in some way? Because I truly just want to be the best customer that someone has to work with anytime I'm in this situation. So I explain that, say, hey, I'm not trying to take advantage of you in any capacity. I'm very sorry. This is just the situation. That's it. Is there anything that we can do? This is the response that I received from her. And there's absolutely no way for me to be able to relay this to you without doing a dramatic reading. It's really the only option because it is truly that unhinged. You ready for this? I really hope you get the mental help you need, Christopher. Coming in hot. The spiciest of armpits, like truly like unhinged. That is the first line of the email. It actually only gets worse from here. That's, that's the beginning. I really hope you get the mental help you need, Christopher. I see that you're very confused about who's posting what. You know what, actually, I apologize. This does require some extra, this it requires a little bit of extra information. The previous email to this, I, she had accused me of saying that it was in unsellable condition that she couldn't repost it, she had lost material, that I had been a bad customer and that, you know, now she was just out the wool. But the weird thing was is that I had seen my order on her website. 
I knew that it was out there and I knew that it was out there because I had taken pictures of the wool that I received. And so I sent an email back saying, actually, no, you aren't losing any money on this unless it is unable to be sold because it's on your website. I screenshot it and included a picture of the wool that I received that I took side by side. And I'm telling you here, they were the same yarn. I promise you, I'm not in the business of gaslighting people. I'm not. But Gaslight Gina is. So here we go. Please find yourself a different business to scam. Again, it seems like you're not understanding a no. I asked that you immediately stop contacting me, yet that obviously did not sink in. I have zero issues taking legal action against you if you won't stop your harassment. Apparently just wanting to get that 1375 as harassment. I have absolutely no idea. Please be aware that any further comments about my business and derogatory posts will be viewed as attempts of extortion to get your way and defamation. Now, I think that she had me confused with someone else. This is a dire that regularly would post in her stories about how she was experiencing a lot of problems about people saying nasty things with her online, which like, the call is coming from inside the house, babe. So I think that she had me confused with this other person that she was currently in an internet feud about. The reality of the matter was, is I had actually never said anything about her on my Instagram account, except glowing things about how much I loved her yarn, but you know, potato, potato. None of the businesses out there would be cooperating with someone so unrealistic and disconnected from reality. Please review your emails where you're demanding specific details in the colorway. Again, those details were ones that she offered as an option and could have said no at any time. I would not have been hurt by that. I've never dealt with someone so awful as you. There she is, Miss America. I would love a plaque. I would like a plaque to go right there, right there on my shelf that just says, worst customer for one indie dyer in the United States. 2022. You're throwing an adult temper tantrum about a coupon that I chose to cancel. Please take some retrospection. The yarn was not received in resaleable condition, and to be honest, I was very generous in refunding the actual amount you paid. In fact, I've lost material and time and money that I've spent on your insane order, yet you want your coupon honored. It wasn't even a coupon. It was just a sale that she was running on the website. But, you know, I don't think that we're dealing with, like, someone who understands what's happening. It's okay. It's all right. Any sales and coupons are subject to change at any time at the seller's discretion. Good luck trying this trick of yours at any other store. I'm sure that you do it all the time, seeing how persistent you are in this. You absolutely blatantly disregard any store policies but call my business a nightmare, which I, I have to like, I have to actually address that one. Yes, I did use the word nightmare, but in my defense, I actually said that the situation was a nightmare. I would never call a business a nightmare, and I certainly wouldn't call a business owner a nightmare unless, you know, I may have responded to this email with, you are being a nightmare. However, this was the setup for by far what is the absolute greatest yarn-based insult I have ever seen in my entire life and I hope that I ever receive. She closes this email out with, it really seems like Hobby Lobby is more your speed. Hobby Lobby? I'll never get over that. Hobby Lobby. She said that Hobby Lobby would be more my speed. You know what? If I didn't have any hair, all of it would be ripped out. Ripped out by that read. Absolutely merciless. And I would like to state, for the record, she said, please do not ever contact me again. And for the most part, I honored that because I did respond with one more email that said, I guess I'll see you there. Hey everybody, thank you so much for tuning in this Halloween. I hope that you had as much fun watching this video as I did making it. If you have a moment, I'd love it if you could like and subscribe. It really does help new creators like myself grow their audience. An absolutely monstrous thanks to the support of my Patreon subscribers this month. Y'all are the best little yarn goblins and fiber trolls a fella could ask for. If you would like to receive access to ad-free versions of my videos, curated playlists, behind-the-scenes footage, and more, 
click through the link in the caption below. As always, you can reach me on Instagram, TikTok, Substack, and Patreon by searching Flannel and Pearls. This is Christopher, your local neighborhood knitting friend, and I'll see you next time.